Here's my top five Vanguard funds that I think are possibly the best you can invest in from here in the UK. As you know, there are thousands of different options out there, individual companies, ETFs, mutual funds, REITs, you name it. So to make your life a lot easier, I've put together five of my favorites, some of which I've invested my own hard-earned money into. So without further ado, let's kick off. And this is in no particular order. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. First up, it's one of the most popular funds Vanguard offers, as well as being one of the most famous stock market indices in the world. This ETF tracks the S&P 500, some of the greatest and the most powerful companies headquartered in the US, many of whom dominate their fields and do business all over the world. From a high level, we'll see that this tracks 508 different companies, has a super low ongoing fee of 0.07%, and also has over $30 billion worth of investors' money poured into it. To put this into perspective, if you were to invest £1,000 into this fund, your charges would be 70p per year. I don't think you can even buy a coffee for that these days or get much else. Obviously, this doesn't factor in any other fees for your platform fee, etc. But if you buy somewhere like Trading212 or Invest Engine, you could avoid platform fees altogether. So go check them out after this video. This fund is passively managed, remember, which means that there are no fund managers trying to pick the stocks in the portfolio. They literally just copy and paste all of those companies in the index and allocate the funds depending on their market weight. The larger the company, the more the fund buys. You'll see this here if we go to the portfolio data section. Scroll down, the top companies are the largest in the index. And at the top, of course, you've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet, and so on. Apple will have the largest share of this fund's money at 6.91% currently. If Apple suddenly becomes worth less than Microsoft, then the fund would be adjusted and so on. Why is this a good option? Who might this one be for? Well, this one's universal in my opinion. You won't go far wrong having ownership in this fund regardless of whether you live in the UK or anywhere else in the world. This index has proven itself time and time again to deliver great results. It's got a wide diverse range of companies, many of whom are leaders in their space, and it makes up a large amount of the investable world in the US. I'll put a firm bet that whether you know it or not, your current pension pot or other investments have probably made their way into this index somehow. Oh, and one final thing, although you'll probably want this fund to help you grow your wealth, this one does currently pay a dividend as well, currently 1.16%. So if you end up with say £10,000 in this one, you'll make around £116 per year. Sounds good to me, but why not just keep reinvesting it? Sticking with the US for the time being, this next fund is a giant for a couple of reasons. This fund invests in the entire US stock market rather than just the top 500 companies that we just looked at before, which means this also includes a lot more of the smaller and more dynamic companies in the US that have the ability to grow really, really quickly. From a high level, you can see that this fund tracks 4,074 stocks, has an ongoing charge of 0.1% per year, and has 1.3 billion pounds invested inside it. What I really like about this is it reflects one of Vanguard's founder, John Bogle's key principles in that you should just own the whole market. He used to say that rather than trying to find the needle in the haystack, like buying Amazon when it was a much smaller company, just buy the whole haystack. And this fund is about as close as you can get to owning the haystack and the entire barn to put all of it in. In the US, they've got a similar fund, which you may have come across if you watch a lot of finance YouTube content from American creators, and that's the famous VTI ETF. This comes about as close as you can get to this one, but allows us poor UK folk to get invested instead. Why is this one a good option? Who's it for? Well, very much like the S&P 500, this one is another universal one in my opinion. You get exposure to virtually every single public US company from huge to small, and this means that you benefit from the growth in the economy, as well as ensuring that you also get your fair share of gains when some of the smaller companies rise through the ranks as well. If you look back at the history of the stock market indexes, you'll see that smaller companies have tended to do better over the long run, but they can be pretty volatile too when compared to their larger brothers or sisters. So having the best of both worlds with big and small companies gives you a great balance. Up next, let's talk about something a bit closer to home, the good old trusty FTSE 250. Now, I could have easily gone for something like the FTSE 100, but I wanted to throw in a little bit of a curveball and I'll explain all of my reasons for this in a moment. At a high level, this fund has 251 stocks, an ongoing cost of 0.1%, and contains almost two billion pounds worth of investors fund. Remember that in the naming convention, the FTSE 250 is not the FTSE 100 and then the next 150, it's actually the 250 companies after the FTSE 100. So technically it doesn't contain any of the FTSE 100 companies inside of it. And I think it's a good thing, but let me explain why. The FTSE 250 by its nature contains lots of much smaller companies, which as we discussed earlier, have the ability to grow faster and perform better than the wider stock market. There's amazing innovative companies on the list that can grow their business 20, 30, or even 40% per year when compared to some of the larger companies on the FTSE 100. And it makes those big companies look like slow moving oil tankers, which is ironic because some of the FTSE 100 companies are of course oil companies. Just like the previous fund, this one is also passive. There are no active managers. And to show you the kind of companies that are also included in the fund, let's take a look at who makes up that list. 
At the top, you'll notice that there's a lot more of an even spread. Not a single company makes up more than 1.5% of the fund's value. At the top here, you have companies and household names like Centrica, EasyJet, Direct Line, and so on. And this is important to me because it shows that you aren't just relying on one or two big names in this space to carry the weight of the index and your funds are put to work a lot more evenly. Just compare this to say the S&P 500 index that we spoke about earlier and you'll see a huge difference. Why is this a good option and who is it for? Firstly, I think it's good to have some exposure to smaller companies which is useful for any investor looking to find growth. And secondly, I think it's good not to ignore companies which could be on our home soil that might be unloved and undervalued in the market which is potentially what is happening here in the UK with the current state of affairs. Everyone's focusing on big tech and US companies while the UK based firms get left behind, but their time will come, I'm sure of it. Now we're gonna spread our horizons a little bit wider with this one, and this is one I own myself alongside the S&P 500 in my current Vanguard Stocks and Shares ISA. The FTSE Emerging Markets ETF, which can be found through the ticker symbol of VFEM. At a high level, it contains 1,873 stocks, has an ongoing charge of 0.22%, and has $2.3 billion worth of assets included within it. Emerging markets have always been a favorite place for the more adventurous investors to seek their fortunes because there are a huge number of amazing companies out there in smaller economies that have the chance to grow massively over the coming years and can easily beat more developed indices like the UK or the US. Also, don't think that you're investing in just small countries or those that are still very much trying to get themselves going. We're also talking about some big beasts here as well. China and Taiwan both feature on the emerging markets list even though arguably the country's economy and GDP is on the rise and it makes up a big part of the global economy. If you take a look at some of the companies on this list, you'll also notice some huge giants, many of whom are based in China and Taiwan, like Alibaba, TSMC and JD.com, who all do huge amounts of business and have found themselves recently beaten up in share price over the last year or so as various fears in the market have caused investor sentiments to change. I've personally allocated around 15% of my ISA into the Emerging Markets Fund, as in the long term, I think there are huge opportunities here, even if in the short term, anything could happen and they've still been taking a little bit of a hit. Why is this a good one and who's it for then? Anyone who wants to place a bet on emerging economies potentially outgrowing and outpacing the big boys in the US and Europe might want to have a look here and also those who don't want to overweight themselves too much by putting all of their eggs just in the US market. It's easily done if you end up with say the S&P 500 fund, some life strategy and even a global index fund. Before you know it you're 80% US and while that's fine none of us know the future so diversification could be a good option and this expands our horizons beyond just our own borders. Okay finally and certainly not last in terms of the power of this one Enter from stage left one of the best investing funds you can get in my humble opinion. The Vanguard FTSE All World Use It ETF trading as VWRL. It's one of the best funds you can invest in because quite simply it's got everything inside it. As the name suggests this fund invests in virtually the entire world from very small companies to the really really big ones and from the US all the way through to emerging markets. At a high level it's got 3,793 stocks inside of it ongoing charges of 0.22% and a whopping $8.7 billion worth of investors fund inside it. This one is super popular for very good reasons. If you look inside the fund, you won't be surprised to see some of the most famous companies in the world because just like other funds we've spoken about, this is passive and index linked. So it's allocating its fund again, based on the weight or the size of the company. Therefore, if we have a look here, we'll see that the largest names in the fund pretty much match the S&P 500. However, you do start finding a few other names here like TSMC, find their way onto that list and also if you flick over the page you also get the Chinese company Tencent making up 0.49%. Why is this good and who's it for? Well quite simply if you want to invest in a single fund without having to ever worry about how much to invest in the US, the UK or elsewhere this could be the one. You pretty much own the world which is a popular investing strategy and it takes John Bogle's philosophy to the next level of literally owning the entire haystack without leaving a single thing out. As the world economy grows, your wealth will grow with it. And although there'll always be some bad times along the way, recessions and corrections, on the whole, the market is getting larger, companies are becoming more profitable, and by investing more, you get to have make sure you get your fair share of all of that growth. If I wasn't too interested in the stock market or I didn't feel comfortable building my own portfolio, I can easily see myself just investing this one and sticking with it over the years. Oh, and remember, I did say that these funds could make you millions. If you get an 8% rate of return and invest £500 every month, You'll need to do this for 34 years and you'll see your account value tick over that magical million mark. Now, if only we all started doing this in our 20s, we'd be a lot better off. Remember that it's up to you to work out where to invest your money. I'm not a professional financial advisor and I've got no idea where the growth will come from over the next few decades. So how you end up choosing your funds or shares is down to you. Off of the list we've just spoken about, I do currently own the S&P 500 and the emerging markets. 
but I think at some point I'm gonna add some FTSE 250. And if I do, I'll make sure to let you know in my next Vanguard portfolio update. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you are interested in the whole fund offering from Vanguard, I've recently done a complete guide that walks you through all of them, explaining what some of the complex terminology means, and also looking at some of the more interesting funds like the life strategy and target retirement too. So I'll leave this one up on screen now for you to watch after this one. Do drop me a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and as always, happy investing.